In this video on World of Warcraft, I'm gonna show you how to get a nice clean UI setup. I'm gonna give you recommended settings to change if you haven't played in a while, just to get your game working the way, well, I would want it working if it was my game. As well as some add-on suggestions to, you know, change things up a little bit. So quite simply, this is what my UI looks like right now. It's very clean, it's nice and open. It has very breathable space. This is what all the other players look like with the Plater nameplates add-on, which I'll show you how to set up and how to use in a little bit in this video. If I go ahead and show you what combat inside of a dungeon looks like, you can see that this is pretty clean. If you're a healer, I have the health bars really close to the middle of the screen. So if you're a DPS, you might be like, why is that so in my face? As a healer, I need this stuff to be like really close because if the health bars are too far away, it's really hard to focus on what my character is doing versus the health bars of other players. Now, before we begin, I want to talk about some settings that you should change right off the bat immediately, and that's in the base game. You hit escape, you go to options, and the first thing is you should have auto loot checked to on. So every time you click an enemy on the ground, it will automatically loot it. You don't have to click the items. You don't have to like, you know, like hold shift and click to automatically loot. I don't know why this is not on by default. Also combine bags. I saw somebody commented on a previous video. How do you get all your bags to display in one window like uh, this? It's pretty much just because of that option over here. If you uncombine bags, your bags open like this, which I don't, it, I don't like it, but <laughs> it looks much better if you combine the bags. Of course, this is in the controls in the gameplay tab. Moving on to the second tab over here, interface. You can see my settings over here. Nothing is too crazy. You can make sure you're matching mine exactly if that's what you're wanting to do. There is one I want to point out here, and that is raid frames, right? So raid frames, I don't like everything uh, displaying power bars, so that's turned off. I don't like the cloth colors. As a healer, it's, it's very disorientating when everybody's health is a different color and you can't really track who's losing health and who's gaining it. For me, it just feels better that everybody's health is green. You can also display main tank and assist. And then of course, this option over here is my favorite. It's the first thing I change anytime I make a new character or you know play around with new settings. Display health text, I display health remaining. Now, some people might have like percentage instead, like, oh, this person's at 100% HP. I like health remaining because you can tell if somebody's under geared because their health is much lower than other people. So as a healer, you know that that person's probably gonna take a lot more damage. So you can kind of preemptively keep an eye on them. As well as the tank, you can see, okay, cool. This tank has got a lot of HP. He's probably not gonna need any healings because he's, you know, he's just too strong already. And as for Arena, I don't play Arena, so that's that's not really necessary for me. Moving on to the third tab, we have the action bars. Now I'm using action bar two, three, four, and six. If these are not activated on yours, you should probably activate them. I don't know if the um, edit mode that I'm gonna give you, the special code is going to make it work immediately. So you might have to activate these four just like that. So two, three, four, and six. A brief look at the combat tab over here. You can see I have personal resource display turned on. That is the, well, health bar at the bottom of my character, of, as you can see here. Now it is showing twice. You can see on the left I have it again, which can be an, a bit annoying. And that is why we have the add-on called Move Any, right? And if I go ahead and I type Move Any, Move Any is an add-on that you can go ahead and turn frames on or off. So all you gotta do is just navigate to the frame that you wanna change. Like you can see here is my player frame and I can right click it and I can just click hide or show. So if I want it to be here, if I don't want it to be here, you just right click it, click hide. You know, same with the costing bar because you're gonna have two costing bars if you do the plates or nameplates thing that I'm gonna show you in this video. So go ahead and hide these if you don't want them so that your game plays like uh, this. So this is a much cleaner version because it only has the personal resource display which is with plate or nameplates which I'm gonna show you soon. You can see here it shows my health, shows that I have 1.28 million, it's at 100%. It will go red as I lose HP so I can keep track of it. I have my mana here as well. If you're playing a spec that has combo points or an additional resource, you can see that will be tracked right underneath there. It's nice and clean and really easy to work with and doesn't put too many health bars on your screen that can get really in your way, especially having your health bar there twice. And as for your costing bar, you'll see if I do Hearthstone, you'll see it's basically just under there. So it works nice and neatly. I, I really like how this setup goes with the Move Any add-on. 
Of course, you don't have to use move any. It's only really used so that I can get rid of the duplicate health bar if you're using the personal resource display. But it will by default be included over here and then your target over here on the right hand side, much like the uh, modern preset for your edit mode. All right, so those are the major option changes. Now let's talk about our actual HUD that you have right in front of you right now. We're gonna go ahead and right click our character screen, our like, you know, our profile here. You're gonna go to edit mode and you'll see here, this will bring up a bunch of stuff. I'm not gonna guide you how to put everything in the exact place that I have because that would be very difficult. There's actually a much easier way. So if you go ahead and you'll see there's a layout option at the top here, so you can actually save different layouts. You can see I had one previously. This one is the one that I just made. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to share this for you it's going to share a special clipboard string, so a bunch of text. All you got to do is copy that text. It is in the description of this video. And on your game, you're going to go to import and you're going to paste that text that you copied from the description of this video into this section. Give it a name over here. So like whatever the text is there, then you're going to give it a name at the bottom and you're going to click import. And what this will do is it will give you the exact setup that I'm using, the exact frames of every single you know position of everything. You can see our raid frames are showing here on the right, just behind where our party frames would be showing if we're just in a party, like a dungeon. Now, the only big thing here that might be different for you is if your action bars are a lot fatter than mine, you can right click them and change the size of them. I've got them at 80% instead of 100%. I like them a bit smaller so that they're, you know, they don't take up too much space. I already know what the buttons are. I don't need to see massive buttons on my screen. I need to see the raid. I need to see what's happening on the screen instead. And you can see here, I also hid the bar art so there's no artwork on the thing. So it doesn't look just kind of weird. You can also hide that. So all of the action bars, you can right click and you can change those as per this. You can see my settings are six padding, 80% icon size. And then it just also doesn't have the always show buttons because that shows those empty button like grids. Now, in terms of keybinds, you can see here, I have a very specific set of keybinds. I have the first row is the default one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up until zero, and then the minus and the equals, basically that first row of your keyboard. Then I have R, T, Y. So if you notice, those will be on your keyboard in a really easy to reach place. I usually put this for offensive abilities. And then you'll see here on my defensives, I have G, H, J, which, which if you look at your keyboard is pretty much just next to the F. The reason why I don't have F there is because F is my ping button. I find that F as a ping button works really well so that I can just you know, ping when I need to. I can just go boom, right over there, right over there. If you're in a dungeon or you're doing something, you can immediately help your teammates navigate or find something that's happening. And then jumping another row down on your keyboard, we have C, V, B, and N. You'll see them all next to each other. This is typically my mobility, so I can, you know, move faster. I have all of these here. And then Q and E right next to my W are other kind of abilities that I'll use so often. Right above them is Shift E, Shift Q. And then I have my mouse extra buttons on the, if you have buttons on the side of your mouse, you can go ahead and put like your interrupt on the mouse, just like this, or the other one on the mouse, which I usually have a heel or something else. It's up to you how you set that up. And then X, which is just below S, I usually put like a stun. So that's the setup. We have F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6 at the bottom. But like I said, this is not something that you have to copy. This is completely up to you. But if you go ahead and you go into edit mode, the way you change this is by going onto the action bars, right clicking, doing a quick keybind mode. When you do this, all you gotta do is hover over the keys, right? So if I want one, for example, to not be one, I want it to be two, it will now keybind this button to be number two. This one has now been unbound and I can make this one just to troll myself and be like two, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's how you can change your keybinds and get exactly what you need. The other thing you might need to change is if your bars for your health bars in your raid and your party look different from what I have on screen, you can right click these as well. You can see here I have it sorted by role. So tanks at the top, then healers, and then DPS. You'll also have the option to change the width of these. So you can make it wider, you can make it thinner. It's up to you how much space you want it to take. Same with the frame height. For reference, I'm using it just like this. In case yours is not set like this, you can go ahead and try copy mine or set it the way yours is. And for the raid frames, if I go ahead and I click this, you can see I just have mine on the 25 for right now. I got really narrow frame width. I've got a decently high one, so it's not 
too crazy. It's more like towards the middle. My groups are combined groups horizontal. This brings them by group one at the top is that first line of five. Group two is the second row. Um, I prefer it compared to the other one, which puts this weird gap in between them. It's completely up to you. Maybe this makes it easier for you to track what group you're in, what group other players are in, so that you can, you know, group one, two, go here, group three, four, go there. You can figure that out a lot quicker that way. You can always change this at any time, though. Like, no, no one's stopping you from changing this in a literally a click or two. The only other thing I would want to show you is Plater nameplates. Now, I don't play on the default nameplates in the game. I haven't played on them for a very long time. So if it's okay with you, you can stay with it. You don't have to do this. I just prefer Plater nameplates because you can get exactly this personal HUD or this uh, personal resource counter with the health here, the mana, the, you know, the costing bar, all these different things at the bottom of my screen to look like this is with Plater nameplates. This also gives you the colors of the other player's nameplates like this one here. This is a shaman. I know that because it's the shaman blue on top of his head. That's a hunter because of the green. You'll see there's a death knight over here with the red color. So it's a nice way to track what other classes are around you without having to like hover over their tooltip and reading the bottom right all the time. Now, when you install this add-on, you can just type slash Plater in the say. And this will bring up the options like this. Now there are a freaking hundred tabs here. This is like absolutely crazy. You're not going to go ahead and go through all of these one by one and copy them. I promise it's, or it's not that intense. You can actually just go straight to the profiles tab over here. In profiles, you're going to go to import profile. So click the import profile and you will copy the string that is in the description of this video as well. You'll paste it in here and essentially this will give you the exact settings that I'm using so that you can get the exact layout that I have that looks like this during, you know, just open world, just walking around. We can see all the health bars. I mean, like all the name tags and everything. And when you're in a dungeon, this is what it looks like. You can see it, it doesn't really work for the, the players in dungeons because Blizzard turned off the specific changes to like changing other players colors of their names in dungeons for like add-ons like this i don't know why they did that but you can't change any of that so if you're trying to do that it's impossible at least from what i've tried so this is what it will look like essentially when you're doing a dungeon of course, it will affect the nameplates of the enemies, though, so that is fine. So if you're using this for, you know, getting easier nameplates to use with enemies to track aggro and or amongst other things, it's incredibly powerful. I've been using it for so long, I honestly, I cannot go back to playing default WoW because it's just been such a staple in the way that I play. Now, if you've already used Plater nameplates or you're using it currently and you don't want to change all these crazy settings, you just want to like change a few things. You want to see what mine are compared to yours. I'm going to go through quite slowly the, the major ones here so that you can check my settings versus yours. So here are the general settings. If there's anything here that you want to match with mine, colors and threat, pretty default. Target, very default, haven't changed anything. Cost bar, haven't changed anything. Level and strata, haven't changed anything. Scripting, haven't changed. Modding, haven't changed. Personal bar has been changed. This is very unique to the way I set it to. So anything here that you want to match to yours, then buff settings is unchanged. I haven't changed that. Buff tracking, buff special, ghost auras, NPC, enemy NPC. Um, I don't know if I changed this one, but I'll let you have a look at this one. Then there's enemy player, friendly NPC, Friendly player, this one you might want to have a look at to see. And the rest are unchanged pretty much. Nothing crazy happening here. On auto, there is some changes here. This is a bit of a weird function in auto. I don't entirely understand how this works. It could use a little bit more explanation from whoever made the add-on. And that's pretty much how you can get this UI super quickly. And if you want to get it onto your other characters super fast, all you got to do is go ahead and right-click your character's screen here. Go edit mode. You just make sure you have this layout over here on your new characters. Just go ahead and select the layout that you made. You can always go ahead and click the rename button here to rename it. Like I, I do mine by month and year so that I just can remember it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching.